Hello friends, in this video, we will see how to implement asynchronous execution of any method in Spring Boot. Asynchronous execution means that the method execution will not be part of the running thread. Then who will execute that code? So that code execution will be taken care by the different thread. Why is this asynchronous code execution required? So sometimes because of complex logic or some third party dependencies. So instead of keep on waiting for the response, we prefer to execute that code asynchronously. Don't worry, at the end of this video, you will get a clear understanding of the async. Let's implement, create a Spring Boot starter project. Project. Now add our required dependencies like web and dev tools and click on finish. Let's open the async demo application class and run it. See it's working and running on 8080 port. Now let's create a new class and class name let's say async task. Annotate this class as a component. Let's add a simple method with a void return type. Annotate this method as async. Here, just add some simple message with thread detail. So these class changes are done. This application class we have to annotate with enable async. Now let's see how to call the test async method of the async task. Let's create a controller class and class name let's say async controller. Annotate this class as a rest controller. As we annotated async task as a component, so here we can create a variable for async task class and annotate that as an auto wired. Let's create one get endpoint. Just add some simple messages for start and end. And at the end, just return some message. Now, in between of start and end, call the test async method of async task. And the code implementation is done. Now let's run and observe the output. See server started. Let's open the internal browser and execute the get endpoint. See it is working and if you observe the output then you can see like end message is printing immediately after the start message and the async task method execution is happening at the end or even you can see both method executed by a different thread. I hope you got some idea about the async. Let's stop the server and enhance this code to some sort of real time example. Let's rename this async controller to notification controller and async task rename to email sender task. Here inside the notification controller, let's create one private method which will give us the email addresses. Assume in real time scenario, there could be a database call that will return the list of email addresses. But here, this method is capable of creating a list of emails based on the n value. Change the email sender task method name from test async to send email. For this send email method, pass the email addresses list. And to get n value, let's read this from the path variable. But before that, let's implement the send email method. And here, just iterate the email addresses and inside the loop, just sleep a thread for 1000 milliseconds. In real time scenario, obviously, mail sending part takes some time. And replace this message with some other message. I hope this logic you can easily understand. Now, here, to read the n value, let's add endpoints array. So if there is some value, then use that as an n, otherwise consider 1. Add path variable annotation and to capture the actual value and that could be null, so use optional. Pass this count to prepare email list method. Add some simple check like if value is there, then use count, otherwise 1. I hope you got some idea from this example. See scenario is very simple. Let's run again and see it is working or not. The server started without any error. Let's test the get endpoint. See, with no value, it is sending only one mail asynchronously. See, now it is sending two mails. So basically, email sending or sending message is a time taking operation. So the best way to execute that code asynchronously. Let's change the value to 20. I hope you got an idea about async, like how to execute some piece of code asynchronously. And once the execution is done, you can capture that response and store in the database. And later you can read data from that table and show as part of the notification, like mail sent successfully or like these many messages we sent. 
So this is the basic or you can say the simplest way to implement. There are other things also we can do like what if the async method returns something or throws an exception Then these cases will cover in coming video. As you can see this is the 17th video so if you want to learn about the Spring Boot other concepts then please watch previous videos as well. Thanks for watching.